Hey everyone, welcome back to Cyber Security TV. Uh, we're going to continue our series of the cross-site scripting and this is more about the advanced cross-site scripting. We have covered some basic session in the earlier videos. So this is a part 5 and today we're going to talk about the execution sync. So uh, you must have heard the word like a source and a sync, especially for the DOM accesses. So what's the execution sync? Uh, so in the execution sync, the native JavaScript code updates its own code flow with the data control or provided by the attacker. So uh, if you imagine uh, every access is how it works is it starts with somewhere which is called source and then uh, finally where the uh, payload gets executed, it's called the execution sync. So when you provide this uh, uh, particular, like, you know, the attacker provides this payload, it's going to parse and evaluate and execute as a JavaScript code and it might like you know change its own flow as well don't worry if it doesn't make sense right now we're gonna look at the example and and we'll uh, we'll also see uh, like you know some functions which uh, would be like you know maybe contestant for the execution sync so here's the example uh, so as you can see what I've done simple is there's a uh, like four variable uh, one uh, first variable is color one which is red color two green then we have an array then we have an index which search through uh, all the parameters, get through the index, like it will, uh, based on what index you provide, it will convert it to a string. Then we are using eval function, and we have seen in the past the eval is uh, not a good function to use, or we don't recommend in any of the JavaScript code, because if the attacker has can control the input to this eval function, then it can execute anything. But of course, to demonstrate this uh, particular vulnerability, uh, I'm going to use it well. But also, we'll see some other examples uh, in the future slides. Uh, then I'm using document at get element by ID, and this is just a simple uh, HTML code, right? Now, what should happen if, let's say, there is a there is a page where I have hosted this? Uh, so uh, let's say if we provide index is equal to color one. So based on this uh, particular code color one is red, so it should give you a result as red. Now, what if I provide alert one because it's going to be passed within the alert, sorry, the eval function. It's gonna go this index straight gonna go to the eval function. It's gonna execute alert one, and of course I'm gonna get a pop up. So let's see uh, this example uh, in the Firefox and we'll come back and see some more functions. So here's the page. Uh, so first, so let's try with color one. Of course, we're gonna get the results as red. That's what we have in the value. Uh, now let's try with alert. And there you go. Uh, we also get the alert box. Now if you go to the page source, uh, which is pretty simple, uh, it starts with the hello guest, then we have a script with uh, all the variables and uh, pretty much the main logic lies is this one which we have already uh, seen. So uh, based on the uh, provided uh, value by the attacker, because they can control this eval function, they can pretty much do uh, like you know whatever they like in terms of the access vulnerability. So you must be saying like okay that's pretty straightforward like what's advanced in this one. Uh, so this is like a basic uh, source and sync and basic DOM accesses. Now what we are uh, going to focus on uh, to execute the code, we use the eval function, right? And we have previously used uh, associated events to some tags like on click or on mouse over and all those things, which are basic accesses. Now technically, functions that parse a string as JavaScript code are called execution things, which we have now understood, like how the execution things work. And JavaScript offers several alternatives. So this is the eval is just one example. And what usually happens is the developers would think, okay, the eval function is vulnerable, so we are not going to use it, and they end up using some other functions, and which is pretty much like you know uh, has same vulnerability as this one. Now you cannot rely on the uh, scanners to find these things. Uh, you might have to manually locate or confirm confirm whether you can control some of these functions. But yeah, uh, there are a few alternatives to the eval functions. So even if you don't see eval, but you see any of this, 
uh, functions, you can still exploit the DOM access. So the reason why we must analyze this function is simple. If we are able to control one of them, we can execute JavaScript code. So within one application, that might be uh, like you know thousand line of code, and and within that there might be using many functions, and and they might be using eval as well. But let's say we are not able to control this eval function, but that's fine. We have so many opportunities as an attacker. You have so many options to attack the application by finding just one uh, such function which can <coughs> which can count as an execution sync. So the following are the few other examples. Uh, so for example, if you see set timeout, if you see set interval, uh, immediate, or function. So these are just like you know I have put like a four. Uh, pretty much most used function by any application that I have seen so far. Uh, if you just Google it or, or look it up, there are several other functions uh, which which are classified as an execution sync function or dangerous. And 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 you have to uh, first off, you don't need to use it, and if you even use it, you have to be very careful with that. And you can also find the syntax of this function uh, on on several websites, so I'm not going to go in detail. But we're going to see uh, one interesting variation of the function sync, uh, which is this. So what you can do is you can have an object, then you can use array, then you use function, which is constructor, and then finally you can use access vector. So in this example, this would be an object, this is a array this is a function and this is going to be an access vector so even if you provide this particular value uh, to the function it, uh, you, as an attacker you can able to uh, execute your payload so uh, execution sync is very interesting and and of course it's not easy to find you have to go to the code flow you have to read through JavaScript and and find whether uh, as an as an attacker or as a an user you have any control over them. But the critical thing is if you find even one a function which you can control, the game is over. Like you can pretty much do whatever you want using the access payload. Uh, so that's that's about it. I wanted to discuss in this video. Uh, I hope you guys like it. Please hit the thumbs up button if you do and subscribe to Cybersecurity TV on the Facebook as well. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, if not, I'll, I'll see you guys next week.